almost like a vice party. Like people standing around going, this is gonna be awesome, someone's gonna get naked and jump in the pool. And no one gets naked and jumps in the pool. <laughs> It's one of these opportunities for pretty much anyone involved in the music industry to come together and see new bands. It's, it's worth it if you've got something going on. If you haven't got something going on, it's a bit of a kind of a shot in the dark, really. South by Southwest started life as a way of promoting new music. And since it began in 1987, it's become one of the biggest festivals in America. Traditionally, South by Southwest was a place to get signed. For bands, there was no better place to vie for the attention of the music industry. But with that kind of hype now largely being cultivated online, is South by Southwest still relevant? London-based band Summer Camp thinks so, and this year they're paying to fly out to Austin to play at the festival. We started the band about a year and a half ago, um, and we then we just put out a couple of songs on, on the internet and we were lucky enough that some blogs picked up on it, uh, which was brilliant. And then we started doing gigs and then we got picked up by a manager and we've just, we're just in the process of recording our debut album with Steve Mackey, the bassist and pop. It used to be bands that were unsigned, but in the last few years it's turned more into a marketing conference where bands that are already signed, this is the way that they can sort of bounce off and get more publicity. You hear the legends of like, oh, local natives were the South by Southwest band, and they ended up getting, you know, loads from it. I think it's that difficult thing of because it is a really blog thing, it means that it's people are live blogging it the whole time, so mm. if you do a bad gig, everyone's going to hear about it. Yeah, the first time when Les Harry Five came, uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. You know, we were in our 20s and we had a crappy van and, and drove thousands of miles to play for $200. And it was just exciting to be here. And that time seemed very different um, than it does today. Bigger and bigger bands are opting to play at South by Southwest. Muse, Van Morrison and Kanye West have all featured in recent years. But in some ways, these mega artists are a step away from the festival's roots of small gigs along the rowdy central hub of Austin's 6th Street. Basically, every three or four doors down, you have venues. I really don't know of another place in the United States where you have this many venues this close together. And it's one of the things that creates this tremendous dynamic that you can have that many bands, that many people in the music industry, all in one small area. <laughs> black hole of the music industry, not in a bad way, just in the sense of like everything to do with at least this part of the music industry, you know, the indie rock music part of it, it's just been sucked into South by Southwest. Like everyone I've ever met as a musician is in Texas this week. So that was our first show and we've got five more and a session. The next one is in about two hours. Yeah. If a band's playing a lot of places, they also got, the, got an opportunity for a um, different audience each time. And there might be some bands that sitting outside in the sun in the afternoon, they might do better than in the, you know, the one o'clock time slot at a large venue or at a hole in the wall that no one ended up coming to because uh, they ended up going against some other band that was hotly tipped. Word of mouth is still one of the main things, or some people call it tweeting these days. But, uh, uh, I think that's the other thing is is now that there are people in in shows which irritates the heck out of me, but they're they're using their iPhones and and what other mobile devices to say, hey, this is a great band. You need to get here, you know. So there, that has actually changed the whole thing. You know, sure enough, this South by Southwest, there'll be one band that's oh my God, you have to hear them. So and so that you respect saw them play, and oh my God, they have become the band, and they are really good but I feel bad for the thousands of bands that drive here for the hopes that this might be their shot in a world that doesn't really exist like that anymore. But despite all the changes, it seems South by Southwest will always hold an irresistible appeal for bands. 
Thousands of them will travel halfway across the world for nothing more than a slim chance that playing South by Southwest will help them get a toehold in America. It went well, and I think it was, I'm really glad we did it, but I think there were, there was after kind of, especially after having a first gig, which didn't go as well, and that was, we knew there was a lot of industry there. That was a kind of a real bummer. And then, uh, but after that, our shows were great and we did, it was definitely worth it. But at the same time, there were points during the week where I, I just felt so like disappointed, I guess. And, and so almost embarrassed that we'd bought into it in a way. The fact that everyone has read blogs, um, they've read other media, they know who it is that they're supposed to see at the shows. And also because the shows themselves are so big, it's really hard to see the band that you've been told you ought to see. The buzz bands were bands that were already signed. So it wasn't like people it wasn't like people were stumbling into venues like just checking out the new stuff. It did make you think, I mean, is anybody out here actually getting signed? Is anybody out here going from like zero to hero to yeah. Enjoy an awful cliche. It used to be focused, like you, you could see bands, you could get into shows, if you bought a badge, you could actually make it into the showcase. And now they're making so much money. I came, it's amazing how much money they're making. I think this is their biggest year ever. And the bands are still getting paid nothing. If anything, you know, they have to play official showcase for 200 bucks or something, or they get a badge. Their roadies have to pay for their stuff, so they're just, they say it's very artist friendly, but I don't, an artist come here and like, yeah, we're gonna get signed, and that sort of weird expectation dream that doesn't really exist yeah, anymore. Uh, the expectation is you're doing it to have this unique opportunity to play to like the members of the industry. And it was so, like, it was like playing a wedding, like a big corporate wedding, where the people that are at the wedding don't really care and you haven't got a sound check and your, your gear doesn't work. But then there happens to be like a few people who've gate crashed and they're really into it and they dance at the front and yeah. you're like, this is, you this know, is this worth is doing worth doing. Because, because they can't. Yeah. yeah.